global financial crisis has caused government debt to soar in advanced economies. Public concern is rising and a debate rages on how to fix the problem. For the advanced economies, the average debt to GDP ratio is now approaching 100%. Debt levels are now higher than at any time since World War II and are set to keep rising. In many countries, the required fiscal adjustment is historically unprecedented. This chart illustrates the adjustment needed in advanced economies in terms of deficit reduction. The first data point illustrates the fiscal balance today. The second data point illustrates the balance needed to stabilize the debt to GDP ratio at its current level, while the final data point represents the balance required to reduce the debt to GDP ratio to 60% by 2030. Fiscal consolidation will be one of the defining economic challenges facing advanced economies over the next decade. A recent IMF book entitled Chipping Away at Public Debt examines past attempts to re-establish sustainable public finances. Using a case history approach, the book seeks to explain what worked, what did not and why. One such case study looks at the United Kingdom. Over the last three decades, four chancellors attempted deficit reduction strategies to restore the UK public finances. In 1980, Geoffrey Howe introduced his medium-term financial strategy. The red bar in this chart illustrates the UK fiscal deficit in percent of GDP in 1979. Geoffrey Howe proposed a mixture of tax revenue increases, here represented by the yellow bar, and expenditure reductions, the green bar, which would generate a small fiscal surplus in 1983. This is represented by the black bar. Now in this chart, we look at outcomes under the strategy. Actual revenues, again represented by the yellow bar, improved in line with the strategy. However, cutting expenditures, the green bar, proved more difficult than envisaged. The fiscal deficit in 1983, illustrated here by the red bar, shows that deficit reduction fell short of its target. Later plans, by Nigel Lawson and Ken Clark benefited from a more benevolent macroeconomic environment. These plans successfully reduced expenditures and met their objectives in terms of deficit reduction. More recently, Alistair Darling's plan for a modest fiscal consolidation was derailed by the global financial crisis. Paolo Mauro, editor of the book Chipping Away at Public Debt, highlights the key lessons for policymakers today. Have a fiscal adjustment plan. This is crucial to reassure markets and the public and to keep the cost of borrowing low. But be aware that things may turn out different than you expected. For example, economic growth may fall, revenues may fall as a result, and the government's own perceptions of whether adjustment or stimulus is needed may change. We saw this in Germany in the 1970s, in Japan in the 2000s and in many countries during the most recent crisis. So when you design a plan, make sure that you spell out what you would do in the event of shocks, shocks in particular to economic growth. Jamile Sanjak, co-author of Chipping Away at Public Debt, looks at lessons from recent successful fiscal consolidations. The best approach to developing a fiscal consolidation plan is to think through the role of government and to identify the expenditures that offer the best value for money. Canada, the most successful case we reviewed, did exactly that in the 1990s. Germany in the 2000s is another good example. Well, here are some of the key pitfalls that we observed. Don't overestimate your ability to cut spending. In Europe, many governments wanted to cut spending, but eventually they weren't able to cut as much as they wanted and they had to raise revenues to compensate. We saw this in Italy, in France, and in countries outside of Europe as well. Don't mistake strong economic growth and booming asset prices for fiscal adjustment. In the 1990s in the United States, revenues increased and by the end of the decade, people were talking about the disappearing public debt. But in hindsight, we know that the boom years of the 1990s and 2000s should have been used more wisely. Public support is a key requirement of a successful fiscal adjustment plan. In Canada, opinion polls in the early 90s showed that public debt was the number one economic issue. This strong public support enabled the government to meet the objectives of an ambitious fiscal adjustment plan. It's very important to explain to the public that fiscal adjustment is needed to keep borrowing costs low, which, in turn, promotes investment, helps create jobs, 
and revives economic growth. Thank you.